Hey guys, just want to let you know now, starting to get some dates on the books. Uh, September 16th through 18th, I'll be at the Phoenix House of Comedy. This is a makeup show from, uh, from before the virus. And uh, go to ryansickler.com for all my live dates. You'll start to see them there. Uh, also want to let you know, this is something people have been asking for years. People have been saying, you got to make a ringtone of your laugh. I don't know why anybody would want that. I can't understand why anybody would want to hear that on their phone. But after years of messages, comments, I did it. We got ringtones of my laugh coming. I promise you we'll put a promo out and blast it out so you know where to get them. But uh, I heard yous. And you're about to hear me on your phone all the time. All right. This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by ExpressVPN. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all social media. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for your support. The messages, the emails, everything that I get uh, is so supportive, and I really do appreciate you guys. I'm glad you like the show. I love doing it. We're bringing you more and more. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't just watch. Hit that subscribe. Tell everybody you know about it. And the Patreon, the Honeydew with you all, is just its so much fun. I, I mean... Again, I can't tell you the crazy stories we're hearing, uh, and that community is growing and growing. So keep the stories coming. Hopefully, I get to do an episode with you. Sign up. It's only 5 bucks a month. There are no other tiers, levels, or anything like that. It's 5 bucks. Uh, you get an episode a week, audio and video. You get access to the whole back catalog. And if you do it for a year, you'll save on over a month of free episodes. All right. Uh, as you guys know, I record here at Santa Monica Music Center. I want to tell you about something we have going on here right now. We're working uh, with the uh, at-risk youth and the Santa Monica Police Department on a program that Lana does here called ADA, which is Outreach Through the Arts. Um, right now, we've got some young kids here learning how to podcast, learning about cameras, graphics, uh, all that good stuff. So uh, we're giving back to the community, teaching these kids possibly they want to get in front of it. They're coming up with ideas, everything. So we got a lot of that stuff going on. If you're looking to get into podcasting or anything, you live locally, there's space for uh, rent in Culver City. At the Culver City Music Store, you can go there um, and check it all out. So keep an eye out. I'll be promoting these kids and what they've got going on here. Now that that is all out of the way, you know what we do over here. We highlight the lowlights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. Uh, and it's a pleasure to have this storyteller back on the do, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Martindale. Uh, Welcome back. back to the do, brother. We're back. Happy anniversary. This Thank is you. actually first one time year. here. This is, yeah, the first time I was here was this time last year. Yes, and you were at YMH with me last time yeah. in the studio, so yeah. thank you for coming cheers, on. Cheers, cheers. Um, thank you for having me out here, because today I'd probably just be sitting in a dry bathtub listening to dry. Driver's, <laughs> last, driver's License. That Oh, that dry, have you heard the Driver's License song? Uh, God, no. if you want to oh, cut. Oh, yes, I have, that girl that oh. everyone keeps, I saw the SNL sketch. Yeah, if you yes. want to cut, that's the that's, song to do it, That's a cutter too. song? Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, uh, well, before we get into some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. you know how we do it. Please plug everything and anything you would like. Um, yeah, I will be on tour. No, that's not right. Um, I will. Nope, not doing that either. Actually, <laughs> actually, you actually have some. My Venmo is Justin Dash Martindale. <laughs> um, I have a birthday coming up. This will be my second quarantine birthday, so yeah, hit me up. I'm shirtless in my profile pic. You're welcome. Um, that's that's really that's really no. Actually, I have a amazing podcast. Thank you. There I was we about go. To say, you're I was plug like, your I'm a whore. <laughs> no, um, I have an amazing podcast with my friend Justine Marino, um, comedian and um, uh, Insta Thought. I think she's an Insta Thought now. Um, called Glitter and Garbage, and that is available on Spotify and iTunes. So we are bringing you more fun episodes. We've had guests on like um, Trixie Mattel. We've had um, uh, Brian Friedman, amazing choreographer to Britney Spears and Beyonce. We've had Janie McCarthy. We've had amazing guests. Um, so yeah, check that out on iTunes and Spotify. All right. Glitter and Garbage. Glitter and Garbage. <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Now, 
if you want to hear Justin's backstory and everything, go check out his first episode here on the Dudes. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, it I is actually, a good one. I actually had a lot of listeners hit me up, and like I made some new some do friends from it. That's they were like, awesome. "We loved you." Yeah, we got a, like do? a little do crew. Over a little do crew. And they're, gr- they're great people. Yes, everybody they are. here. They're good fans. Like, yes. I'm blown away. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, it chokes me up how good they are. Oh God, where's uh, the journal? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Justin asked me who takes the cake, the crown for the biggest crier. I want to know if it was Jeremiah Waga. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And if we if we put back in the shit we had to cut out, it'd be a two hour episode. <laughs> Subscribe to his Patreon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he lost oh. it. He did. He lost oh, it. Oh, good. Uh, first and only guess, we had to stop down and bring <laughs> tissues in, you know, so. Uh, uh. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, mm-hmm. let's jump right into it because we've got a few stories to tell here today. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's start with a DUI. Okay. But um, before we do, sure. how old are you? I was 23, so just stupid. All right. So yes. leading up to that, are you drinking? Have, when does drinking start in your life? Uh, drinking started like... High school, like 16, 17. Right. Yeah. And were you drinking a lot all the time, or was this just a bad night? Um, was it was this it coming? Was, this was a just one of those nights that, like, damn it, I wish I would have stayed home. So because what it turned into it always does when not you being a DUI. Oh, let's hear so that. So that was the whole what frustration. Oh, yes. This okay. is the worst. This is one of those moments in my life that I was just like. How do I put it lightly? If I could describe it in like one word, it would be fuck. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's literally how it was. Um, okay, so and one of these stories that I'm going to share today actually leads into this story. All right. There's layers. There always layers. are with you. There's yeah. some blankets and some throw rugs and whatnots. Um, so yes, I was um, working in Northern California. Um, I had spent two summers in Lake Tahoe doing, um, working for the Lake Tahoe Shakespeare Festival (laughs) because I don't know if you know, but this face screams Shakespeare. (laughs) Um, yes, I was a master thespian, um, an out and proud thespian. I was doing like leading man shit. I was crushing it. Were you Othello? Oh, yes, clearly. No. (laughs) You get me. Yeah. Um, so I had been hired after that summer to go do the performance at the um, where the theater is based. It was based in uh, Nevada City, which is in California, uh, Northern California, small town, Main Street, you know, nothing really going on there. Um so I got to stay on after the season and do a rehearsal and everything. So once the rehearsals and once the show started going, we I think we were doing like a tech night or like it the show might have even opened up already. Um, we had gone out that night to celebrate. And we went to a couple bars, me and some of the cast members. We stayed out until like the bars closed. And the thing about being that far out is there's no city lights you were like you have the mountains and the moon yeah that is the <laughs> that's it so you have to be you know coherent to drive because there's twists and turns on those mountains that you could fall off of oh tiger woods too soon um <laughs> <laughs> and so um i decided that i was going to be the designated driver Now, I'm a tall guy. I'm a big guy. I can handle my alcohol, especially now since I'm not drinking it anymore. (laughs) But um, then, you know, we're shutting shutting down bars. Like, my cast members are just shit-faced. And I'm like, okay, I'll I'll drive everyone home because I need to get everyone home. So you're not only driving yourself, you're driving other people, too. Yo, the lead of the show is with me, you know? And he's a tiny, tiny dude. And he's fucked up. I got Macbeth in the back. Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) It's who brutes hey. Um <laughs> Romeo, shut the fuck up and try to drive. <laughs> Desdemona, I myself shut, too, Julia. Yeah, Desdemona, I shut myself the fuck too. Up, you cut. Um, so, um, 
we're at one bar and we decide it's last call. We're going to have a shot, right? Let's just do a shot. How many people are you going to drive? I have this? two in the car with me. Two plus yes. you three. What, what are we driving? I am driving a Ford Explorer Sport. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so you're now having a round of shots before you drive bef somewhere. Before, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, okay, I'll take a shot of Jack. That's fine. So I took a shot of Jack. Get in the car. We have to loop around. How this many is, drinks did you had prior to the shot? Oh, I was. It was like maybe honestly like two Bud Lights. Okay. So nothing like good. So I get in the car, pull around, and we have to get on the main street. So I pull into this empty lot, and right when I say this, I'm looking around and I'm like, "Damn, there's a lot of cops out tonight because it's also the end of the month, and there were, there was a lot of people partying that night." As I'm pulling into the parking lot, I'm pulling out onto the main street. Woo! And I'm like, you're kidding me right now. What? So I pull over. Guy next to me is just like, Bleh! like speaking and <laughs> like speaking some like gibberish soliloquy. And uh, I'm like, be cool, be cool. And so this cop comes over to my window, fucking hot. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> This hot cop just, I was waiting for the porn music to start, just like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> like I was waiting. And um, roll the window down. Of course, I'm like, yes. <laughs> He's like, do you know why I pulled you over? And I'm like, well, I could name a couple reasons. I didn't say that, but it was oh, in was my mind. Say. It was in my mind. I'm like, yeah, no. And he goes, you went down, you went down a one way or you, you went into a one way parking lot. Mind you, there's no cars in this. And I'm like, I didn't see this sign. He's like, yeah, it's at the front. And I look over. There is literally a branch covering this one-way sign. And there's, again, no cars. It's a, it's, a, it's a grocery store parking lot. So he's like, have you had anything to drink? And I'm like, I've had a couple, yes. And he goes, um, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm driving home, obviously. There's a little bit of banter, all this stuff. And then... Um, they ask me to you get say out of banter the or iambic pentameter. Iambic <laughs> pentameter. <laughs> you guys, you imagine. Five, four, five, five. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to throw in the like, I'm performing up the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know who you pulled over? <laughs> <laughs> you still got your ruffle yeah, around right? your neck and shit. <laughs> the feet, like the mask. I have the skull. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or skull. skull. Yeah. <laughs> How darest thou pull me over? Um, uh, so I, so they, so they, they're talking. It's it's a it's hot cop and like another cop. <laughs> okay, yeah. And um, so they're talking. Whatever they ask me to get out of the car. So I get out of the car. They then start talking to me. They put a light in my eyes. They're checking for like pupil dilation, everything. I'm talking completely normal, and they even say they're like, "Oh, you're talking." fine you're 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 not slurring your words okay but we're gonna give you this breathalyzer test and i'm like okay but before the breathalyzer test sorry they give me the the, the line walk yeah and i'm just like ga, 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 just, just walking oh, down just <laughs> fucking to 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 the moon like like living my like rupaul's drag race maxi challenge oh, runway shit. fantasy um which is fine. They're just like, great walk. And I'm like, duh. Thank you. And uh, so then they give me the breathalyzer. So I blow this breathalyzer. I This breathalyzer comes back like 2.8. Like, how? Yeah, right. Yeah. How? And he's like, well, you blew a 2.8. I'm like, that means I'm dead. Dead. Yeah, you're dead. My pupils are dilating correctly. My language is fine. I just did the line. He says, well, the breathalyzer said... You're shit faced. And I'm like, I wouldn't be driving if I was shit faced. I'm literally the designated driver. We have a show like tomorrow. We had a matinee the next day. Matinee. A matinee. <laughs> Remember matinees? Uh, so, what do they do? They slam me on the car. Really? They pulled you oh, out? Oh, you were already out. The shame of they it all. They slam you on the car? Oh, oh. I was like, I doth protest. <laughs> <laughs> Just slam me on the car. Don't protest. <laughs> Get thee to a nunnery. <laughs> <laughs> they, 
They let oh, they slam me on oh, the on the shit. hood of my car while the bars are like oh, being, oh, 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 no. everyone saw me. Everyone was like, "Isn't that the actor from up the street?" Um, <laughs> isn't that Big Beth? Yeah, isn't his name on the marquee? <laughs> That's the Justin Martindale. Oh, um, shit. and I'm, and I'm just, I'm in handcuffs and I'm just like, oh, like, are you just, crying? Be honest. I was me. no, 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 no. I was angry. Do you know what's happening? Do you know you're going to jail right now for a DUI? No, I just thought I was going to like sit in the car for a hot second. Until they figured it out. Because the 2.8 yeah. is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So after that, they put me in the car and everyone's like, damn, <laughs> look at that guy getting arrested. Yeah, right. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll be back guys. <laughs> And uh, so they put me in the car, and then they're like, okay, we can either tow your car, or we can let your friend drive it. My friend is shit-faced. That's why I'm driving. He yeah. takes my car, and I'm like, dude, don't take my car. He's like, I got it. He they let him. They off. let him. No They way. let the shit-faced They let a drunk guy person drive. drive my car and away. And you're getting arrested and for I'm drunk driving. And I'm in the back of a cop car. And I'm just like, I can't even cover my mouth. I'm like, ah! And so they take me to the jail. And what's Ugh. the jail in Nevada City, California like? You would think there'd be more because like you'd feel like there'd be like a like a bigger meth community. I was going to say, I feel like it is a meth community. It's not. It was right. actually very, nice uh, it was nice. Refreshing. I was the only one there and they were having a field day. With you? Oh, yes. They were like, oh, we got this tall, white gay that just came in. It was just like this unicorn that just got picked up from the forest. <laughs> yes, yeah. They were like, oh, what is this? What is this majestic beauty? Oh, yes. So oh. I walk in there. They 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 thumbprint me. Um, they took all the – they took my wallet. They my, my phone is dying. Like it's – it was, you know, a flip phone at the time. And – it's like on its last leg. Then they put me in this cell. I remember there was like a Tom Skerritt movie in the lobby. And I mind you, I'm so I'm like walking around. I'm just like, why the fuck am I here? They unhandcuffed me, so I'm like in the lobby. They thumbprint me, I said that. Um and I go, I'm sitting down waiting. I guess I'm being processed. I don't know. At this point, I feel like I'm in a doctor's office, but I'm not. I'm in a police station, and I'm the only one there. Tom Skerritt's looking at me with judgment and um, from the TV. <laughs> and uh, I get up to go get some water at the water fountain. And this and the, this officer's like, sit down. And I'm like, I need to get water. And they're like, you got to ask permission. I'm like, okay, everyone needs to fucking relax. <laughs> you said and, that. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> just calm down. This is, I'm like, I'm still in this, like, there's a big misunderstanding like mind frame. So then they put me in a cell. There's nothing in there. I'm the only one in there. Thank God. Um, what time of morning is it? This now? is like, I mean, th at this three, point it's like four. three. Yeah. yeah. And there's nowhere to like sit. There's nowhere to like lay down. So I lay down on my body just kind of shuts down and is like, go to bed. It's late. So I lay down on the floor and I kind of doze Ugh. off. I doze off. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning to a swift boot kick to the ribs. Damn. Oh, full on kick in the ribs. And I look up and I'm like, I remember just wincing because I was like, what the fuck? And um, turns out cracked three of my ribs. No way. You know, I was a, a frail youth. <laughs> And this guy, I look up and it's this cop and he turned the lights on, horrible, horrible fluorescent lights. And he's like, Martindale, get out of here before we change our mind. And I'm like, this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and so. <laughs> so wait, he cracked through your fucking ribs? Kicked me in the, like, I'm at like a cop boot. Yeah. Just bam. Like, like you could say. Probably steel toe. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it, was, it hurt. Like, but again, adrenaline, I was still in that. Everything was kind of processing and it hurt. But like, I didn't know the extent of like how bad it hurt. And also you could say like, good morning, sunshine. Or yeah. hello, handsome. Are you still asleep? But they didn't want to say that with me. So anyways, I get a boot kick to the ribs. Get out of here before we change our mind. I'm like, well, where am I, what am I supposed to do? And they go, you better figure that out before we change our minds. And I'm like, what? Uh, 
So they give me back my phone. They give me back. They don't give me back my money. They took they, it. They took my money, gave me a check in the amount of like whatever the fuck it was, like seven dollars. My phone's dead. It's pouring rain outside. And I don't know where I'm at. I don't have anybody's phone number. You know, this is before like, you know, iPhones and shit. So I don't know. I, I don't know my stage manager's number. I don't know anybody's number off the top of my head. Had These are like San Francisco numbers, Northern California numbers. So what do I do? I decide I'm going to walk. So I don't know where I'm at. I finally figure out, okay, there's the highway. So I decide that I'm going to walk down the highway in the pouring rain. It's freezing. You're nuts. This is like dark. This is like and this is like Do you have your did they take your shoelaces and all that shit? No, no. no. I would have rather hanged myself. Honestly. (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) If they I mean, I didn't even think about it. It was just so I just remember it being like it was like early November. Four or five o'clock in the morning, I'm freezing and alone. I'm walking down this highway. It's pouring down rain. Every fucking 18-wheeler is driving by me like, I'm like, oh, my God, this is it. This is how I die, honestly. Um, So finally, I think I walked nine miles. Damn. Yeah. I walked nine miles to finally I got to an exit that I was familiar with, and it was the stage manager's exit. Who who was, you know, running the show or whatever. So I walk. I'm like, okay, I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. Just a few more. I'm exhausted. And my ribs are fucking broken. <laughs> when do you find that out? I mean, I could just tell. Yeah. It was like, I was like wincing. Like, it was like, ooh. Like every time I breathe. Yeah, there's it was, nothing you can do no, for those. No, yeah. I knew. I knew. Um, I knew there was cracked ribs in there. And so I finally make it to his house. The sun's coming out. I knock on his door. He opens the door and he's like, what are you doing? I mean, I couldn't even imagine like what he saw. Like, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure he was like, did I just watch The Ring? Like, <laughs> the like ring. did some yeah. like like Asian girl crawl out of a TV? Like, what is this? Like, what is this hot, wet mess? Oh, shit. And, and I just, I, I then show him my fingers and they're all, you know, processed and, mm. and, uh, black and blue from the fingerprinting and i'm like i went to jail and he's like what so i dry off i lay down i get like a couple minutes of sleep on his couch i wake up the next day i have to go to a show so i show up and ever like my state like everyone's freaking out because they knew john the, <laughs> we'll call him hold, John. Hold, hold on, real quick. <laughs> we'll call him Mark. <laughs> Mark that ass. <laughs> yeah, just bleep it. I'll just say. I'll say. So the guy. So the guy that I was driving, he made it to where he told the director, like, "Oh, Justin's been in jail. Like, they arrested him." Da da da. So my whole crew and everything's freaking out. My director at the time goes to the police. Who she's a native of the town. Goes to the police station, cusses them out. She's like, "What the fuck are you doing? He's not from here. Like, what? What?" Like, where is he? And they're like, we don't know. Didn't give a fuck. And so I get there. She's pissed off. She's like, I can't believe that happened to you. You know, everyone's like, what happened? And it sucks because I knew I was, like, doing right and being responsible. And now everyone kind of looks at me like, right, yeah, you're the problem. You're, you're. Right. mm, This ass. You were drinking and driving. And I'm like, no, I was. So anyways. We do the show. The show must go on, you know? Of course, especially <laughs> Shakespeare. Especially Shakespeare. <laughs> so um, afterwards, I end up calling um, uh, the court because once the show is over, I'm leaving the town. Right. I'm going back home to Texas. I'm driving back to Texas. Oh, you're driving. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm not going to be here for the court date that they'd given me. So I call them. And I'm like, yeah, just to let you know I, I got arrested and I didn't really hear anything back and I'm not going to be here. So what do I do? And the lady is just like, well, I wouldn't worry about it. I go, OK, I don't have to worry about this. And she's like, yeah, if you're going to be out of state, there's there's nothing really, you know, we can do. And I'm like, OK, cool. Hang up. Leave. Go back to Texas. Come back another summer. To work in Nevada City back, again? Yes, to okay. do another summer. Then after that summer, I moved to L.A. for the first time. Okay. 
So I'm driving oh, around. Shit. Huh? I'm just wondering, is that on your record when you get back to California? Well, I'm sorry. I drive by. I drive after that summer. I came back to LA for the second time. So the second time I'm here to this day, right? So I'm driving around in Beverly Hills. I just got this new job. I'm driving around in Beverly Hills. This fucking prick cop on a bike. I wish I was like, where's the hot one? Like <laughs> this guy was just like seriously Terminator Two, like that cop, like the the liquid silver yep. cop. <laughs> He pulls me over and he's like, uh, on a bike, on a bike. He pulls me over because I'm trying to even think, I want to say I either rolled through a stop sign or I had a, um, or like one of my lights was out. I can't remember. Um, but he pulls me over like right when I'm out in front of work too. Like I'm literally at work and I'm right there. You get a pulled over and right, right in front, in front of, of my yeah, job yeah. that I just started. <laughs> and I'm like, I am fortune's fool. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. So I give him my license and he's like, and he's on a bike. And too. he's on a That's bike. The worst. God. God. He's leaning up against your car. Oh, shit. Just so much attitude. Yeah. 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 He's like, you're that Shakespeare fag, right? <laughs> And I'm like, well, my <laughs> reputation precedes me. Um, <laughs> so he um, gets my license and he's like, this license has been suspended for two years. And I'm like, what? He's like, yes, you also ha um, you have a, um, a warrant. A, it's not, it wasn't a warrant. Bench warrant. It was something, it was just the license was suspended, right? So then... They tow my car. Right there on the spot? Right there on the spot. They pull up, call a towing company. They tow my car. And do you, do you realize, do you put together quickly, this is because of the DUI or you don't know? No, I'm just like, what? And they're like, yeah, you have a, um, you have a, uh, uh, an extended, extended ticket or something in Nevada City. So I'm like, ah, fuck. So they take my car. It's in an impound. And then, um... Uh, I get it out and I had I start another job and like I had like these bounty hunter guys show up at my job and they arrest me at my job so what I get arrested at job I get this? arrested at work yes wait why because so they let you go right there though so they just they took did, your yes. car only yeah they just okay. took my car Got and it, then how and much I got longer? It back. How this much? was shit. This was um. They just randomly show up at your work. Where are you working? Where was the new job? Uh, the new job was West Hollywood. Yeah, okay. it was like, and, and they this, walk right into your job. These three guys came up to me and they were like, "Yeah, we're looking for Justin." And I was like, "I'm him." And they were like, "All right." And I was like, "What the fuck?" So yeah, I got arrested. Got taken down to Beverly Hills, uh, police station. Beautiful, beautiful place. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, facility. really good. Yeah, <laughs> tons of organic food and um, filtered water. Um, and so they were like, "Oh yeah, you have an arrest warrant out for this thing in in Nevada City that was a couple years ago or whatever." And I'm like, "What? Mind you, I'm dating this new person, and I'm like, hey, I'm in jail, which is what everybody wants to hear on the other end of like, oh, I'm seeing this great guy, yeah." yeah. So I get out of jail. I have to then um, uh, get my car and drive it to Nevada City to go figure this the fuck out. And I'm so mad because I'm like, oh, not only have I been like embarrassed and shamed and like in the you know bleakest of weather down a highway and my ribs have been broken yeah. and I had to tell my mom and she like came out to drive with me to go oh, take care nice. of it. Okay. Yeah. And so my court date is at like five o'clock in the morning on this whatever fuck morning and bullshit Nevada City. Five AM. It was like an it? early, early, Jesus early court date. Christ. I remember I remember I remember like getting my bearings, like waking up and just being like, Okay, I've got this. Like I'm I'm panicked. You know, I'm just like, what the fuck's gonna happen? So we get into the courthouse, they're like, Okay, Martindale versus Nevada City Shakespeare players. <laughs> <laughs> and and the 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 judge is like 
oh yeah, we don't have anything for this. This 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 case has been dropped. And I'm like, what? And they're like, oh yeah, the the cop doesn't work here anymore. Hot cop had been transferred, oh. so he can't be there. And they were like, yeah, there's there's uh, insufficient evidence on this. So case has been dropped. It's off your record. Have a great day. And I'm like, that's it. That is it. The shit <laughs> that I went through. I mean, not only did I pay for an impounding fee for like a month. How much is that? Oh God, I don't even. Remember. It was like several thousands yeah, of dollars I that I didn't have. I right. had, and I, you know, moved into a new place in West Hollywood. I had a, you know, a new job. Everything got taken from me like that. And my car, I couldn't, I couldn't make payments on my car. So my mom took the car back to Texas and sold it. So for 10 plus years, I didn't have a car out here in LA. Is that right? Because it know that. fucked me up. It fucked me up. So you just did Ubers and taxis and buses? I just did Ubers and, and, and lifts. I walked everywhere. Okay. If it was walking distance, I would ask friends for rides. I just did not have a car because I was like, I'd never want to deal with that again. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust myself. Like, it was awful. So knowing that I got this DUI taken off my record, I was very angry, of course, just because I was like, wow, I went through all that bullshit for nothing. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how the court could be like, oh, yeah, this has been dropped. This is off your record. Oh, yeah. But like all the other shit still applied, you know? Right. So yeah, that was that so was when the, did you finally get a car? How long? September of last year. Of 2020? Yep. How about you now? Because the coronavirus every, you decided to drive. Well, because all the roads are great right now. <laughs> well, no, everything A was on fire. Yeah, Literally, no every, there was a the fire around yeah. us and there was a pandemic. And I was like, can I call a lift to get out of town? And I was like, you know what? My mom, my mom, my grandmother, rest her soul, passed away and and gave me like a little bit of a um a little inheritance. So I just That's saved nice. that and got a car. All right. And so I was going to ask if you want to go get drinks after this. And <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was so, oh God, that sucked. <laughs> Talk about like, that was definitely like a scarred for life moment. Yeah. Cause it was just everything. All of that trauma was related to a car. Of so now, and it's crazy even to think, cause this was all a before car. like Uber and Lyft. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're drinking and driving out there, like fuck you. Yeah. Like seriously, because it is not fun. I see those billboards and it's like a DUI can cost your ten life. Grand, yeah, yeah, ten grand for if nothing. That, if that to pay for it. Yes. And like, thank God it was off my record because yeah. they were like, we don't have any evidence or anything. And I was like, Whew. how I many? I mean, people? there were certainly cabs back in the day, but nothing like the um, uh, availability of transportation these oh, days. Yeah. Nothing like it. There's was. nothing like and I mean I couldn't even imagine like even if even if I was shit face, which I was not that I couldn't even imagine like hurting somebody. Like not only are you drinking under the influence, yeah. but hurt like crashing into somebody or running someone over or mm -hmm. like I couldn't even process that mm -hmm. like that just terrifies me even to think of so yeah well it's not worth it it's not worth it call a lift call an uber yeah, be responsible please. even if you even if you just have a couple beers and a shot and you're like i'm good i'm gonna take my friends home um not i want to say there was something um there was a case i want to say shit who was who was it with someone just got their oh um Bruce Springsteen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bruce yep. Springsteen. Super Bowl right they, after yes, that. Yes, he got charged for DUI, and they dropped it because they said the machine malfunctioned. The boss got that? Yeah. It was on that, Twitter bro. today. They were just like, oh, yeah, the, the DUI charges got dropped because the the breathalyzer was off. So that, that shit happened. So I was yeah. like, 2.8 or two, yeah, whatever the hell no it was. I was like, no, 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 no. So, yeah, there's no way. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now, you don't want to be like that house. Remember that house back in the neighborhood that the door was always open, people running in and out. You didn't even know who those kids were in there. They're taking people's food, their pets, everything. You don't want to be like that. You got to lock your stuff down. Why use ExpressVPN? Because ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so your online activity can't be seen by anyone. It's as easy as closing your front door. 
All right, here's what you do. You fire up the app and you click one button, okay? It's rated number one by CNET, Wired, and The Verge. It works on phones, laptops, even routers, so everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. All right, I use ExpressVPN all the time. I don't. I have it on, actually, I just got a new um, modem and router from Spectrum, and we put it on here at the office and at home, uh, and it just protects you. It keeps you safe out there, and nobody jumping in on that that Wi-Fi. We need to upload this video to you every Tuesday. Secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash honeydew today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S vpn.com slash honeydew and you can get an extra three months for free expressvpn.com slash honeydew now let's get back to the do um tell me about this blacklisting story okay speaking of alcohol (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, this is one of those moments that i can now laugh at because it was so long ago, but at the time, oh my, this shit stayed with me for about three years. Um, there was a little show on the air called Chelsea Lately. Mm-hmm. I wrote promos for yes, Chelsea Lately. Yes, everyone back worked in the day. on it. Mm-hmm. It was kind of at the at the height of E, um, entertainment. I mean, I felt like that was kind of like the the Carson of the new millennium, I guess. Like it was just like, oh, you're going to go on Chelsea. What a great honor. You're going to get so many fans and da, 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 and you're going to go on tour and your life will change. So um, I've talked about this on a couple podcasts, but I'm, you know, I'm excited to go in depth with you. Um, I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So I started doing, I got passed to the comedy store in 2009. So this was probably about 2000. 10 or 11, I would say. Um, uh, A comic friend (laughs) asked me to go meet her, comic friend at the time, asked me to meet her for um, lunch at this restaurant in West Hollywood. And she proposed this job for me because she was going to get her own show on E and she was looking for a co-host and she thought it was would be great with me because we could banter. I'm gay. People love gay people in the Midwest. Um <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was gonna be this like fun <laughs> spin-off show for, you know, uh so every white woman could have their own gay at home. And um I was I, like I remember leaving. I remember walking home, <laughs> walking, <laughs> walking home, home yeah, yeah. calling my mom, and was like, "This is it. It's happening. We're doing it." And afterwards, she invited me to go to uh, a, a taping of Chelsea. And I remember like, "Oh my God, here it is. It's happening. Oh shit!" And I remember getting there, and I remember seeing Chelsea Handler. And the the first thing that Chelsea came, I didn't even like say hello she just looked at me and goes are you gay and i was like yeah and she goes i knew it and i'm like but you can also hear my voice right like you're not a sleuth (laughs) like (laughs) when you see a guy at your show you automatically assume they're gay because you know it's chelsea lately and you're on the e-network i mean come on um so i'm watching the taping and then afterwards uh, the friend is like, hey, I got an invitation to the Christmas party. Would you want to go? And I'm like, shit, yeah. She's like, you know, we're just going to ease you in. We're going to get you on the panel um, on this show to kind of ease you into the next show and all this stuff. I had met like all the execs at the time. Um, you know, oh, they're all excited. Like, this is what's going to happen. And I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, oh, this is fucking dope. Sure, yeah. I find like people had been telling me for the past couple of years too, like, you got to get out of Chelsea. You'd be perfect for it. I'm like, no shit. Right. And um, again, no car. So this person decides that, uh, oh, well, me and my boyfriend at the time, will come pick you up and we'll go together. It's over in Santa Monica. It's like, you know, down the street at this hotel. Um, and so they come pick me up. Very exciting. And I remember we pull up to the hotel and she said to me, she's like, oh, by the way, um, this party is sponsored by Belvedere because that was Chelsea's like favorite yeah. alcohol, right? And I'm like, oh, shit. 
And I said, well, just to let you know, I don't want to be that guy. And she's like, we're all going to be that guy. Verbatim, I stand to that this day. <laughs> like, I, that those words were exchanged. So I get there, and it is just a who's who of, you know, Chelsea lately. Like, you know, uh, Heather McDonald was there. Sarah Colonna was there. Um, Josh Wolf. Uh, uh, Josh Wolf was there. And uh, Brad Wallach was there. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember who else. Just everybody. John Caparulo at the time was there. Um, you know, all the agents, all the who's who of the show was there. And I'm nobody, right? So I walk in and um, I see the bar. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's like a whole wraparound bar, just Belvedere, ice sculptures and shit. There's a photo booth. Um, and I just remember going to the to the bar and I, ha I, I you know, had something. And it gets rowdy. It gets rowdy to the point where I think, no, I don't think, I know. <laughs> That the DJ had left the DJ booth to go pretend it was fucking Tijuana, Mexico, and pour shots down our throats to a Black Eyed Peas song. Okay. That's how drunk I was. All right. I was enjoying the Black, Black Eyed, Eyed Peas. Peas. <laughs> Which to me, the Black Eyed Peas are the wiggles for adults. <laughs> 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 like I... <laughs> That's the best goddamn comparison I've ever heard. <laughs> like I, it's so perfect, man. That is so spot on. I, I like that's how you oh, know you're gosh. drunk when the black eyed peas are on, and you're like, I got this, guys, <laughs> ladies. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Oh, that is some kids' bop voodoo. All right, no, thank you. Mm -mm. Oh, God. So, no one has seen Chelsea yet. Oh. Um, and mind you, I'm not friends with a lot of the, the people on Chelsea. Now I am. Like, I'm friends with Heather and, you know, Josh Wolf. And, you know, everybody's kind of worked on it. I now know. Um, but we were all so fucked up. So fucked up. Everybody. Um, so, I'm like, well, where's Chelsea? Chelsea's not there yet. Chelsea at the time was dating 50 Cent. So okay. 50 Cent had not shown up, and she wasn't drinking. So 50 Cent did not show up, but his posse showed up. So people were just like, what the fuck? What do we do? Everyone's like scrambling, like, oh, uh, you know, it smells like weed in the hotel now. And everyone's like, ah, uh. of course. So I go up to Chelsea, and I'm like, I just want to tell you, you know. Uh, okay, yeah. And I remember some guy pushing me away. That's it. <laughs> that's all you remember that's it, that's it. <laughs> i remember waking that's up it. the next morning in my bed in my apartment goals <laughs> and i swear not even hung over like i literally i the way i describe this story is i woke up like snow white like it literally was like what a wonderful party <laughs> like the bluebirds came in. They're like, did you have fun? I sure did. Like, it was <laughs> like a Disney magic moment. Like, the deer came up and was like, here's your water, Justin. I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I texted, <laughs> I texted the person I went to the party with. And I'm like, oh, my God. Thank you so much for a wonderful time. It was great. Da, 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 da. The response I get was, oof. And I'm like, oof. What do you mean, oof? Don't oof me. She writes back, you got kicked out of the party. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean I got kicked out of the party? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We don't know what happened. You just got kicked out of the party. Now, I'm freaking out because I'm like, why would I get kicked out of a party? People love me. I'm the life of a party. What, what happened? Like, did I fight somebody? Did I? Yeah. What happened? All of the people that I followed on Twitter at the time who followed me back on Twitter, all of them unfollowed me. Whoa. That morning, all of them unfollowed me. And I was like, shit, this is serious. That week 
I was supposed to do the show. Gone. Mm. It got to the point where I was at the comedy store and I saw the person who invited me. She stopped talking to me altogether. Would ignore me. It got to the point where I was like, hey, like, what's going on? To, to the point where I was like, am I insane? Am I an insane person at this point? Uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything about the show, so uh, got to go. Right, because you're supposed to do a show with this person. Yeah. Right. Who you know very well. <laughs> Tell me later. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, like, freaking out because I'm like, am I a disaster? Like, what happened? No one's giving me any hearsay. It's just go along with it. Shut the fuck up. You're not. You're never doing Chelsea lately. Um, a couple years go by. So I so I said like three years go by. Wow. And mind you, I had I had left my manager, got a new manager, got left a manager, got a new and, manager. And in that three years, no one told you what the fuck happened. No, nobody. No one. No one. But every new manager was like. Martindale, I got it. You're going to do Chelsea lately. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> I was like, by all means, you can try. So Michael Cox, who used to yeah. book Chelsea lately, he would get a call from my manager every time and be like, hey, you know, we want to get Justin Martindale on the show. And he was like, Martindale's never doing Chelsea lately. He knows why. And I'm like, but I don't. I don't know why. I don't know why. So I gave up. So there's one night where I'm performing in La Jolla um, and Fortune Feimster's with me. Fortune just got hired as a uh, writer for the show. So she's like, I just got I got hired as a writer for the show. I'm like, congratulations. Now, you have to find out <laughs> right away. what exactly your first job shall you accept to take it. You have to find out what the fuck I did at the party because she wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. And she's like, OK, I'll find out. So I'm like, OK, good. Find out. Finally, <laughs> three years, three later. years later and like demons, I mean, just the depression. I'm like, I'm over like no one's going to hire me. No one's going to give me a job. I'm never going to work for E. I'm ruined. I'm a ruined, scorned woman. <laughs> woman. <laughs> I can't give my husband a child. Um, <laughs> It's a girl. You wanted a son. Throw her in the river. Um, The. Uh. Finally, Fortune hits me up, and she's like, I found out what happened. And I'm like, oh, my God, girl, tell me everything. Oh and my she's God. like, yeah, um, I asked Heather McDonald what you did, and she just said you were really drunk, and Chelsea was sober, and she wasn't having it. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, you were just drunk, and Chelsea was mad that 50 didn't show up, and you were just annoying her, and she just kicked you out. And I'm like... Whoa, 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 whoa. You mean to tell me that a woman who's based her career off being a fucking alcoholic mess kicked me out of her Christmas party? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. It's pretty lame, to be honest. But Is that really okay. the extent of it? That's pretty, yeah. It that is. was exactly what happened. That was, she was like... She was there. She was mad. And you this didn't is what say, I say. There was no word back that you said something offensive or did no. something offensive. You were just... Way too drunk. I was just too drunk. I was just too shit faced, and I guess I might have been like you know, stumbly or you know, and she's like, "Ah, oh, get this guy out of here!" Blah 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 blah. Oh, I left out that that was the Christmas party, so I went home for uh, Christmas, and when I got home, Chelsea lately was on, and Chelsea's doing her monologue, and I swear to God, I'm, I'm watching with my mom. You know, and uh, Chelsea looks at the camera and she's like, for the first time ever in Chelsea Lately Christmas party history, I kicked a drunk guy out of my party. No way. Cuts to a picture of Chelsea and the person I went to the party with, with Chelsea's thong in her mouth, pulling it like, you know, the copper tone baby. Uh -huh. And oh, okay. I'm in the background just going. <laughs> But again, it's not it's not me ah, being out. shitty. It's just yeah. literally me just doing the home alone face. And I'm like, oh fuck, I made the monologue and my mom just <laughs> just looks over at me and I'm like, oh my God. 
<laughs> oh my god. So that <laughs> that experience oh, fucked with me. That's your credit. For years. You did Chelsea lately. You did do it, goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made the monologue. <laughs> But it, I mean, definitely put a weird damper on that on that friendship because I want I even want to say like I saw this person in the hallway before the pandemic, and uh, uh, she brought me up on stage once and was just like I had to follow her, and she was like, "Who's next?" And they're like Justin Martindale, and and um, she's like, "Oh my god, I love this guy. I love watching him. He's so funny. Da 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 da. I can't wait to sit in the back and watch him. He's gonna be great. You're gonna love him, Justin Martindale." And I get up there and I go. Is she still in the room? No, she left. Oh, I'm so glad she uh, she decided to stay in the back and watch me. Yeah, yeah. Like, just full of shit. Just such BS. And uh, there was a moment in the hallway where I was like, hey, I know, like, we've had, like, a couple of years now of this weird, like, tension or whatever. But, like, I just want to say it is what it is. I can laugh about it now. And we're fine. I had a show at E! on Snapchat. So it did suck, but, like... It is what it was. And, you know, I kind of feel like. And they replaced me with somebody else for her show. And her show got canceled. So, cool. <laughs> hey. I mean, Hollywood, am I right? Hollywood. But, yes, I'm like, ugh. People are like, what What, what would you say to Chelsea if, if you saw her today? And I'm like, I'm not. Like, <laughs> there's no. We're fine. What do I yeah. say? I was the one. <laughs> like, there's no. Well, you mentioned Hollywood. And you said that, uh. You had some stories from your Hollywood twink days, as you say. <laughs> now, please explain to everyone out there what a twink is. Because I had to look it up only uh -uh. a handful of years ago. You looked up twink? Yeah, I had Good to for look. you. I had never heard I had never heard that term. You've never before. heard of a twink? Not until probably like when I was like 42 or 43. Mm -hmm. It got by me that long. <laughs> what a twink Well, you know was. what a bear is, right? Yeah, of course okay. I know what a bear is. It's like a, you know, just pick an animal. I don't know what exactly. I think a twink is just, a twink is just a young slender That's the youth the bear could be yes 50. i'm a hair, like i don't have body hair like i just have never had body hair i've never had to shave my chest nothing it's so just hairless is hairless, part of it like a like a like a young like a young peter pan <laughs> <laughs> he's already young <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> he never grew up. Never grow up. How old are you? 98. What? A young yes. Peter Pan. Just a young, like a young, like if you see, <laughs> like it's like, it's like, like in the early 2000s, it was like that emo kid, just really sure. soft skin and, and like this big around, just skinny, like elf looking, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I mentioned the second time I moved out to LA. So the first time. I moved out to LA was um, um, definitely an experience. I had my space was still a thing. Okay. Um, I was uh, I kind of got involved with this group of guys that were just very, 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 very Hollywood. Um, Monday we would do this. Tuesday we'd go here. Wednesday we'd go here. Thursday we'd go here. How many of you would you say? There Half was probably dozen. about like seven to yeah. ten of us, I guess. And was everyone a twink? Is it okay for me to say twink? You Is can that say a negative twink. term? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh, you just got canceled. <laughs> so sorry. Can you imagine if I get canceled for asking if I can say twink? The twink that's community how, is listen, outraged. That's how this yeah. fucking I'm business so sorry. Is. He this, got canceled for asking if he yeah. could say it. So sorry. He tried to be an ally, guys, but just turned out to be an asshole. <laughs> Uh, um, shit, old white guy over I here know. know what What's I am. What's a twig? <laughs> Did he call me a faggot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh, I'm shit. sick. Of, hashtag sick of sickler. Sick of him. Uh, so I uh, end up going out. How old are you, by the way? Th I mean, point? shit. I was twenty. This was, this was yeah. This was like. 21, 22. This is your peak, going, Justin yes, Martin. This Dale. goes into the first summer of Tahoe. So, Got it. Um, I'm living with two of my roommates from Texas. We moved into this apartment in um, Palms, I think, mm -hmm. and um, uh, got a job. And 
around that same time as when I met my dad from the first Honeydew right. episode where, where I went to Tijuana and all that shit. So I had met these guys. We're partying every night. We're doing cocaine. We're drinking apple martinis. Oh, God, those were the days. <laughs> Remember Watching days? Sex in the City and like, I mean just raging and they lived in Hollywood and I lived in Palms. So it's like, I would just stay there like kind of on these like benders. So I didn't have to drive back and forth. And, um, um, one night, <laughs> one night we went to this party and this guy was there and he was, a photographer <laughs> yeah i know the photographers yeah it's the photographers and the guys that are selling speakers oh. you got those those two crews out there yeah and things you want to hear as a young 20 year old gay kid in la is have you ever thought about modeling and i'm like oh have i <laughs> Um, so we're just, oh, I mean, we are just gacked out of our minds. Me, and I want to say it was like three of the friends. And we are in a shower, naked, but we're not doing anything with each other. Um, I'm so sorry. I feel like a lot of your audience just might have turned off. No, the, no we're good. Okay, good. Stay with me, guys. Um, we're in a shower, and we are just posing like we're in a fucking Abercrombie and Fitch. Like, remember Abercrombie and yeah, Fitch when they were like, we sell clothes, but everyone's naked. Yes. And you're yeah. like, what? Mm -hmm. Why what are there clothes so do you sell? That guy's not wearing yeah. a shirt. Why yeah. are there more pubes than clothes? Um, and is it like a glass shower? Or are you guys a, all like, we had the door open and this guy is just like taking pictures and I am just brooding and giving you cheekbones. Oh, no. I'm giving you angles, all of that. Naked with two other guys. Yeah, but I I feel like we I feel like uh, I feel like I was covering it up, but probably not. Come My on, dong's bro. out there somewhere. Yeah, it's out there. Um, so I find out that this like years and years and years later, um, I want to say I ran into that guy, the photographer, and he was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> um." I was over at Brian Singer's house and he has that picture of you guys over <laughs> over his fireplace. Nah. -uh. And I was like, what? <laughs> this is and now I'm like a full adult, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but it always every now and then I'm just like, is that still there? I like I'm wondering, you know, when he's gotten into some trouble with like some some, you know, young guys, but I was like, oh shit, because I mean I looked good in the pictures, I'm sure. <laughs> But still, sure, I'm just like, am I, sure, yeah. am I at Brian Singer's house over his mantle? <laughs> then there's another story, and I've, <laughs> I've never, I've, <laughs> I've never told this story. All right, so I'm Let's like, get that I'm like, exclusive here. Yeah. So, God, I don't even remember where I met this dude. Like, so I, um, this guy got in contact with me because this is shit. I want to say this might have been like. Craigslist or I don't even know. Remember, oh Craigslist. Yeah, God. I know. How was I not murdered? I talked because to people of Craigslist. That get used Craigslist. I can't believe you weren't. I uh, can't believe I you know. weren't murdered. I know. Brutally. Thank you. And like butchered and Thank weird so shit much. done to you. Thank yeah. you. And your dead body. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so this guy's like, hey, I'm a um, model it's scout. It's Craigslist. It's a guy Craig's named list. Craig. Who's and he's Craig? Got a list. That's all yeah, I'm what is this I... list? And is it actual paper it took or off. is it like on a mirror? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so this guy hits me up and he's like, I'm a, um, I'm a model scout, and I'm like, Bleh? and he's like, um, I'm visiting from San Francisco. Um, I would love to talk to you about getting into modeling out here. And I was like, all right, cool. So he's like, come meet me at the W Hotel in Westwood. And I'd love to like grab a drink and we can talk. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, all right, cool. So show up. He's in the lobby and he's probably about like, he's like mid 40s. Like doesn't look like a model scout, but like I don't. 
know what a model scout. Thank I mean, you. anyone can look like a model, model scout. scout. Like? Exactly. Um. So we're having like a martini. He's talking to me like you got a great look, and you know you're you know you have a good uh, a good frame. You got a good uh, body that's in right now. And I'm like twink, twink Martindale. <laughs> um. <laughs> So he's like, okay, how about this? I'm going to go across. I'm staying at, I don't even know. It, it, it was like a house, but it I don't, it was right across from the W. He's like, I'm staying right over here. Let me let me uh, sign out on the tab and everything. You come meet me over, over uh, at the place after this. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I walk over there. I walk in. It is like dimly lit. Um... And he's, you know, he has his clothes on and uh, he starts like talking to me and he he pulls out these magazines and he's like ripping out the pages and he's like, you could do this. You could do that. You could even do this. And I'm just like, what, what, like, what is this? And he's like, yeah, you know, like, I feel like you could, you're very, you could, you have a nice range. You could do these type of shots. But he's not showing you a portfolio. Or not showing he's me a portfolio. There's tearing nothing. tearing shit out of a Just magazine. Just tearing shit out of a magazine. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, like the gears start yeah, going yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oh, God, this guy is full of shit. And um, then it starts getting into like, take your shirt off. Let me see what's going on. What are you, what are you working with there? And I'm like, ugh, fine. Take off my shirt. He's like, all right, now let's see, like, what could you, if you could do like bathing suit, are you wearing boxers? Are you doing briefs? Could they like look like a bathing suit, like a Speedo and like some trunks? And I was like, oh, I don't even remember what I was wearing. So I took him off and I'm like in my underwear in front of this guy. <clears throat> and he starts coming over. He like walks over to me and he's like, just relax, just relax. Starts rubbing my shoulders. And I'm like, oh, I'm okay. Like everything's fine. And he's like, okay, no, like you know, get on the bed. Let me take some pictures. And I'm like, is this going into Brian Singer's house? Because I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> he knows me. He knows me. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. So he starts p taking pictures of me. And at this point, I'm just kind of playing along. I'm just like, I'm in Westwood. Might as well. You know, like I'm not driving. <laughs> like, Where am I going? Um, so then it gets to the point where he takes off my underwear and starts jerking me off. So that's where I'm kind of like, again, I'm in Westwood. Why not? <laughs> that I've already made the I'm drive. In <laughs> like, I know it's weird, but I'm like, I'm in Westwood. I'm in Westwood. What the fuck? When in Westwood, you know? <laughs> I mean, so he starts like, uh, like he's jerking me off, and I. It's weird, but at the same time, I'm like, just close your eyes and go with the flow. Like, I is honestly. Is he taking pictures of this? Probably. I'm sure. Again, probably. again, the dong is out there. <laughs> I'm going to do my own spinoff show called The Honey Dong. And <laughs> <laughs> Justin Martin dong. <laughs> it's a great dog. I have a great dong. I bet you it's do. It's a good, it's a girthy, like. Look, like bro, a, you're 6'4". Yeah. Your dick's even halfway proportionate. It's you're, like a you're, good yeah. can of biscuits, you All know? Right. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. <laughs> this, <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by Bisquick. <laughs> um, so, you know... He, I How finish. I finish, finish and okay. but it doesn't go any further. Doesn't than go this. any further than that. It's just a handy, and uh, then he's like, you know, then we have to say goodbye, you know, which is always the worst. And he's like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I I have to get back to San Francisco uh, tomorrow. You know, I have something with my wife and son. What? Why even say that? Why even say it? Why even say it? Because I think it was him. Trying to pass off that that what just happened, you know, sexual assault, was him being professional. Like, oh, I just wanted to, you know, and it just led to you know, this happens, you know. And I'm just like, uh, okay, you know, I'm just this young, you know, stunning <laughs> <laughs> elf-like twink. Elf -like twink. <laughs> Is this a renaissance fair? No, that's just how he looks. <laughs> and so 
So I remember like he gathered up. Are all... you leaving that night? I left that night. Okay. Yeah. No, there was no staying over. Okay. But I just remember being like, I went home and I was just like, what the fuck just happened? And then um, and you never saw these pictures. I'm never assuming. saw never saw anything again. And I want to know if this guy is like still around. I mean, I wish I remembered his name. I wish I knew like what the hell happened. How many other guys? You know, we had a Me Too oh, movement. God, and everyone's yeah. like, ah. I'm gonna I'm gonna start the He Too movement. The so, He Too, yeah. Because I feel like there's a lot. There's a lot. You always hear about like gay for pay and like all these guys. But again, I wasn't like outraged by it. It was kind of hot at the same time because it was like this stranger. But again, how fucking stupid am I? Like I could have been murdered that night. Easily. Like you never you never know. You never know. And like I mean, thank God because after after. I want to say after that happened, I was hanging around these guys a couple more times and I went back home and my roommates like had all my shit out on the apartment, on the, on the steps. They were like, you got to get out of here, dude. Like you're a mess. Like these are my friends from back home. Like they took all my clothes, belongings and put it out on the curb and were like waiting for me to drive up. And they were like, you got to go. They kicked you out. Kicked me out. And it was the best thing that could have happened to me because um, I loaded my car up and I remember our downstairs neighbor was this old lady. I don't even remember her name. I don't even know if she's still alive. Um, But her like male companion, um, the sweetest guy, uh, he gave me like $20 and he was like... (laughs) He's like, go take care of yourself, like get some help and da da da. And so luckily, thank God I had an aunt who lived out like like out in like uh like San Dimas area. Okay. <clears throat> so I stayed with her, which was technically kind of like a rehab. Mm-hmm. I looked at it as like a rehab, like, hey, like I'm drinking too much. I'm doing drugs. Like, why am I doing drugs? Why am I doing drugs? I'm just like 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 letting people just have their way with my body. Um, wish I could say the same now, but, (laughs) but like it, it, it literally was like a reset and I'm very thankful that like, you know, they could have saved my life when you think about it that way. Yeah. And then I remember like that spring is when I got on the computer, um, got on Craigslist and found an audition in Nevada city. No, to that's when it all started. Go audition there, huh? for the first production that they were doing that year, and that's so great. I went up there, got it, got the part, and packed up all my shit and was up there all summer with a bunch of people who were just like me, who were amazing, who just like took me in, believed in me, you know, and you just kind of like rebuild your character. Yeah, from it makes that. a difference. Yeah, yes. So that was that was the the bookend right there. Well, man, I'm glad it worked out. And thank you for Same. coming here today. <laughs> um, you're the shit. You know, I love you. I love you, come too. Come anytime you want. All right. Um, I please. have to come up with more stories. <laughs> you, I'm sure you don't have to dig too deep. <laughs> um, promote your podcast and yes. everything again, please. Yes, please. Uh, my podcast is called Glitter and Garbage with Justine Marino. And it's pop culture It's, you know, what's everybody watching? What's everybody talking about? It's on Spotify and iTunes. So please like us and subscribe. All right. Uh, As always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.